church. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. What do you need from him this morning, church? What do you need him to be greater than in your life this morning? Speak it out in your heart. What do you need healing for in your life? What do you need strength for in your life? Our God is here this morning to bring that. His heart, his passion, his desire is to draw us closer to himself and to bring those things that we so desperately need into our lives. Lord God, we thank you that through your son Jesus we have healing, that we have hope, that we have future, that we have strength and passion and love and joy and freedom. Thank you, God, for these things. Lord Jesus, thank you for your gift. Holy Spirit, move amongst us. Minister to us, minister to us this morning. Lord Jesus, you are the rock on which we stand. Jesus. Jesus, our cornerstone, foundation on which we build through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. Hey, how many go through storms? Hey, got some storms. Storms been, storms coming. Through the storm, He is Lord. Hey, good morning. Welcome to the Bell Divers Church showing people all they can become in Christ and you might, might want to move around and show someone the joy of the Lord by giving them a greeting look for the person you don't know don't know too well find that person not the person you always gravitate to find the other person right now in Jesus name friends that haven't seen each other for such a long time you sound like you're in good voice this morning are you enjoying worship this morning good excellent so now I've brought out my trusty old guitar you know I've had this guitar here in my hands for as long as I've known Robert Jow it's very very old that's right yes you could do the the math if you like it goes back a very long way I, I don't I don't play it that much anymore but I thought this morning we've got this song and I just thought hey you know what the trusty old faithful because it's so loud and obnoxious <laughs> it's not like robbing myself we're just obnoxious or loud no, we're nice guys we are all right adam let's go praise his holy name say say who do you say he is who are you declaring in your life that he is each and every day who do you need him to be to you today yeah. Please take a seat. On your way in this morning, you received a, care, um, a newsletter in there, you'll find a care card. Now, before we move on, care cards, I, want, I was prompted this morning, you know, to encourage you to use your care card to declare who Jesus is to you today. What has he been dealing with you about this week and who have, what aspect of him have you had to cling to this week? You to be brave and write it down. It can be anonymous or you can use your problem as an opportunity to encourage somebody else. Because everything you go through is not just for you and you alone. It's for somebody else as well. 
So be courageous, be strong, do not be afraid, and share the problems that you've had in your life, the pains and the aches that you have had this week, maybe, maybe in the last few weeks. Just share that to be an encouragement to somebody else. You could put that on a care card or be even, even braver and go face to face with somebody. You can also use your care card if you're new with us this morning. You can register your details on the care card. You can ask for information. Or you can just send an encouraging note or a praise and prayer point to anybody in the life of the church and we'll get it to them. I also want to let you know that we have a new stock in the bookshop. So I encourage you to go over look in the bookshop. And all our programs start back this week. Meanwhile, while you're filling your care cards, share your pens around. Church news will be on the screen. Malachi 3.10 says... Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see that I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have enough room for it. You know, God supports our steps of faith. When we obey Him, even in small ways, Romans 5.2 says we find ourselves standing where we always hoped we might stand out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory, standing tall and shouting our praise. I will bring praise. I will bring praise. I will rejoice. God is my victory and He's here. Church, let's stand. And as we bring our tithes and offerings, um, we'll be singing this song. Your tithes, offerings, your care cards too, they just go in the buckets as they're passed around. Please be seated. You've got to keep planting seed. You receive seed. Some is to eat, but most of it is to plant again. And no weapon formed against me shall remain. Hey, how you all doing? Yeah, had a good weekend? Yeah, I did a wedding yesterday down at Pinjara. Drove down there, it rained all the way down. It was an open, open air one right on the banks of the Murray River. Stop when I got there, we had to wipe down the chairs, the towel, and the table. Then the wind got up, had to put a paperweight on all the marriage stuff in case it blew away into the river. That was a brick, I found a brick. Brick's always good paperweight for weddings. And uh, finished the wedding at about 5.30. Said tada to the people that I knew and Drove off to the Pinjarra Road and home again. By the time I got to Pinjarra Road, it was raining again. So it's a nice little window of opportunity. The guy's name was Adam that I married off to the lovely Este. Which reminds you, I'm doing another wedding. <laughs> Next Saturday, his name's Adam also. He's our drummer. Known him all his life. And he's uh, marrying the lovely Rochelle. And it's going to be half past two over at the C3 church. And maybe you didn't get an invite to the wedding because you can't all come to the banquet. But if you want to come to the church part of it, half past two, at C3 Church over Port Kennedy, all right? That's Saturday. Don't miss out. That's going to be a great wedding, I'm telling you that. Come and celebrate. Come and give you a very, very best greeting. And then Sunday, I'm baptizing two big blokes. Going to wheel out the baptistry. Just shift that speaker back that way a bit. Park the baptistry, the mobile God wash. Fill it up. Heat it up. Jamie here this morning. Jamie will be heating that. Saturday, Saturday, while well, I've got a wedding on, we'll be heating that. And uh, we come Sunday morning, going you know, to baptize two big blokes right here. Maybe the other ones want to get in that water too. Okay? It'll be warm, it'll all be good. One other thing I want to tell you. Guys, I've been writing a book. Taken me, started probably in about January. And finally, it looks like this. Front cover, back cover looks like that. It's now available at Amazon. You can log on to Amazon as soon as this service is done. You can download that baby. And it is a baby to me. I've given birth to this baby. <laughs> and it's been hard labor, I'll tell you that. And, and, and it's, you can get it on Kindle. The electronic version is available now, the e-version or, or the Kindle version. You can get that. And already, I think, there's 20 copies. It only got released 5 o'clock yesterday morning. Huh? which is 5 p.m. Florida time, where my publisher is. It's on Amazon. Uh, they had five hard copies. They've, they've all gone. There'll be a truckload of them in about two or three weeks. But get the Kindle version. 20 have already been bought. They're people I rang. <laughs> 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 I 
So buy it. So get this. Now, guys, it's titled Who Will Lead? Planning for Transition in Leadership. Really, it's about discipleship. If you thought you knew what discipleship was, you didn't until you read this book. I've got to tell you that because this gets you right into the Word of God and uh, right into a, a good model of discipleship. Buy this book. Listen, guys. Kindle version, five ninety nine For just a little less than six bucks, you've got yourself a good book, all right? I think we should do this one next year sometime in Connect Groups. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> hey, you know what the book's really about? It's about showing people all they can become in Christ. That's what it's about. And that's what this message this morning's about as we wrap up uh, this last message in this series that we started after our 20th anniversary. I, I want to say you have so much potential in Christ, everyone here. And when each one of you has so much potential, we've got a house full of potential. I wonder what would hold us back from reaching our potential. I wonder if we really, really believed all that God says in his word, what more we would, would become than we have become. I, I wonder what holds us back, you know? If only we could get past past successes. Some people want to hang on to the past success and say, well, I did so good there, and man, I am good because I did good back there. Well, we, Forget what you've done. Some folks say, well, you know, I've had so many failures in the past, I, no, there's nothing I could ever do that's going to be good. Forget your past failures, forget your past successes. What would hold you back from becoming all that you could become? What would hold our church back from becoming all it could become? Isaiah 54 verse 2, where we've been in Isaiah 54 for the last few weeks, says, do not hold back. Do not hold back. And so in this fourth and final message in this series this morning, I, I just want to put out some motivation, uh, some inspiration and some challenge uh, to, to, to reach out for all that you be, can become and not to hold back uh, from receiving and from becoming all that Christ has for you and through you and for our church, all that he has for us as a church. Isaiah 54 verses 1 to 4 is the promise to the kingdom of Judah uh, Judah had become quite fruitless, uh, they were diminishing in numbers, uh, nothing was going on, they were far from God, they were backsliders and they were in a foreign land. And so this message in Isaiah 54, 1-4 is to fruitless Judah to become all that they could become and become fruitful. And so the prophet says, sing in anticipation of fruitfulness. And while you sing, he says, I want you to follow the commands of God to enlarge to stretch, to lengthen, and to strengthen. And so Isaiah 54 is a picture uh, of the kingdom of Judah being transformed from fruitlessness to fruitfulness and prosperity. The image of the barren woman, the fruitless woman, then applies in the first place to Judah, but then from there it, it applies to any organization, uh, any church, any individual, any relationship, uh, about turning from fruitlessness to fruitfulness. And so the message for this church, this church, and for each person here this morning is a pathway to fruitfulness, from fruitlessness to fruitfulness and to prosperity. Well, here's the thing. You, you probably know as well as I do what comes before Isaiah 54. Isaiah 53, you, you're clever this morning. You're, you're right with me. And anyone who's been around church for a little while uh, we'll know that Isaiah 53 is what is called a messianic passage of scripture. And some of you say, well, I, I don't know what that means, Gordon, but well, I'm going to tell you. And then if you didn't know before that it was a messianic passage of scripture, by the time we're done here this morning, you'll be in no doubt about that. What that means, it's talking about Jesus. Hundreds of years before Jesus arrived on planet Earth, it's talking about him, uh, about his presence on planet Earth and his mission and his ministry on planet earth. He uh, says a whole bunch of messianic scriptures, Psalms and, and, and like this Isaiah 53 that talk about Jesus before he came. In fact, uh, Jesus, when Jesus came, crucified, dead, buried, resurrected, and uh, his disciples uh, are a little out of whack because their leader's gone. And two of them are walking down the road on the day of the resurrection to Emmaus town about eight miles out of Jerusalem and on the way there another guy falls into uh, walking with them and falls into conversation with them and 
It's actually Jesus, but they don't recognize him because uh, post-resurrection, he looks different. And so they don't actually know him. And, and uh, it looks like he's going on past Emmaus, but they invite him in for dinner. It's a good thing to do, invite someone in for dinner. And, and, and it says this, Luke chapter 24, verse 27, not on your screen. It says, beginning with Moses and the prophets, like Isaiah, Jesus explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. Understand, the New Testament hadn't been written when this took place in Luke 24, 27. So these scriptures are Moses and the prophets, the law and the prophets, the Old Testament. And Jesus said, some of these things that are written here, they're directly about me. And he would have pointed to Isaiah, to, to, to Isaiah chapter 53. He said, this is actually about me. So this is one of those passages, Isaiah 53, that foretells the coming of Christ and the mission and the ministry of Christ. And if you didn't know it before, you do now. And I'm going to show you how, how all this works out. But what I want to say about Isaiah 53, I reckon that this verse I'm about to read you from the New Testament is a great summary of, of uh, Isaiah 53. It's Ephesians 5, 25, 27. It says, Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her with the washing of water by the word. He did this to present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or anything like that, uh, but holy and blameless. Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. So th this is actually a commentary on Isaiah 53. The idea of the sacrificial ministry of Jesus Christ was to set up the church and the individuals of the church to become all that they could become, uh, to flourish and to become prosperous to become fruitful. In other words, to enable us to become all that Christ created us to become. So uh, Isaiah 53 is a scripture that foretells the ministry of Jesus Christ on planet earth. And so by the time we get to the end of Isaiah 53, uh, we have described for us therein Jesus Christ dying on the cross for us, for our sins, our transgressions, and our iniquities. And in case you don't know what that means, that means all the bad stuff you've ever done and ever, ever were, Jesus died for them. Secondly, he died for our pain and suffering. By the time you get to the end of Isaiah 53, you'll understand that. And thirdly, he died for our healing. He died for our healing. Isaiah 53 verse 4, he himself, this Old Testament, like hundreds of years before Jesus is born, he himself bore our sickness and our suffering. Are you with me so far? Are you going? This is messianic. Another translation says, He took up our pain and bore our suffering. Isaiah 53, verse 5, By his wounds, or by our stripe, by his stripes, we are healed. And so, so I just want to tell you, there is healing in Jesus' name. If you get nothing else this morning, take this home with you. There is healing in Jesus' name. Now, and, and be my prayer this morning, I prayed this before I got here, that someone here this morning would find healing in Jesus' name. There is healing. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the healer. And just in case you think this is decidedly Old Testament and, and, and it's, you know, it's not for us today, well, well it's a messianic passage of Scripture. And, and I want to read to you from 1 Peter, because in, in 1 Peter, Peter gives us exactly the same stuff. Indeed, once you read 1 Peter... Uh, and you've already read Isaiah, if you take any reference from Isaiah out of 1 Peter, ain't much left. Peter was, he, uh, he peppers his, his, his writing with Isaiah. It's kind of like it's the only book he ever read. And he puts it all in there. And if you took Isaiah out of Peter, there wouldn't be much left. And this is what he said, 1 Peter 2.24. He said, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. Uh, that we might die to sins and live to righteousness by his wounds you have been healed. And you say, where have I heard that before? Isaiah 53. He just took it and weaved it in there. It's, it's what? Isaiah said it would happen. It happened. And Peter said, look what happened. <laughs> You've heard it said before. Some people make stuff happen. Some people watch stuff happen. And others say, ooh, what happened? You know. So Isaiah said it would happen. Jesus made it happen, and Peter said, look what happened. 
and I say, latch on to what happened through Christ, latch on to what Jesus has done on your behalf in regards to your transgressions, iniquities, sins, and also your healing. By his wounds you have been healed. Isaiah 53 verse 5 says, He was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, and the punishment that brought us peace was on him. So when you go back to Isaiah 53 verse 5, you see our transgressions, our iniquities, our lack of peace. And he, he took that on himself. So how, how are we going to fix this and make it right if we've got lack of peace, iniquities and transgressions? How are we going to fix that? And the answer is, you can't and neither can I. But he can and has. That, that, that's the answer there. He's done the job on the cross. What you need to do is to latch onto what he's done by faith. Look at Isaiah 53 verse 5 again. He was pierced. We should have been. He was crushed. We should have been. The punishment that should have been on us was on him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 in the NLT. For God made Christ, you find that just the New Testament just latches onto this and it becomes New Testament. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. And so that's what Isaiah 53 is on about, setting up the church, setting up the individuals uh, that belong to God, who, compri who the church is comprised of, to become all that they can become in Christ, to become fruitful and prosperous. That's Isaiah 53. You know what comes after Isaiah 53. Isaiah 54, you clever people. Because the Messiah has come and paid a price on our behalf, now you can sing in expectation of fruitfulness. Are you with me here? Isaiah 54 verse 1, sing, O barren woman. So what are we going to sing about? We're going to sing in expectation of fruitfulness and growth. Isaiah 54 verses 2 and 3, enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your tent curtains wide, do not hold back, do not hold back, lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes. And so Isaiah 53 is about Christ the head who died for us. Isaiah 54 is about the body of Christ. So Isaiah 53, head. Isaiah 54, body. It's all about Jesus. The church is the body of Christ. Isaiah 53 is about Christ the head, Isaiah 54 the body of Christ and God wants us to celebrate the growth and the prosperity that he has in store for us. Isaiah 54, sing, burst into song, shout for joy, celebrate. These are words of praise and celebration. And so it's time for us to start celebrating all that God has done for us in Christ, all that he has in store for us and to latch onto it by faith. Hebrews 11, 1, since you want to know what faith was. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. I want to say certain of what we do not yet see. See, see faith is, being, is, is, is something that God has given us to be able, so we can see in advance what will be, what God has promised us. What God has created us to become. By faith we can see that before it happens as though it already had happened. Showing people all they can become in Christ. I think about that and I think about we just did 20th anniversary celebrations and that was fantastic. It seems like forever ago now but since then I've burnt my face up and got a new face. And, and birthed a book and planned a trip overseas. <laughs> I no planning was put on me. <laughs> uh, lots has happened since we celebrated the 20th anniversary, you know. But I think about that and think of all we celebrate, you know, the getting of this property. And I look out the back there and here we've got a retaining wall up there and a fence around the western boundary and up behind our shed we've now got an Opticom shelter and on Friday Smeared it in a little pole to put the satellite dish on and we're going to have smart wiring here on our property at someone else's expense. And this used to be a worm farm. I remember the first day I walked on it, actually the, the real estate guy helped me with this and he was not a man of faith. 
not in the way that we are, but he was. I remember he saying to me, Gordon, just think what this place could become. He's, he's selling it, you know. <laughs> just think what this place could become. You could have a faith community here. You could have buildings rising up from the ground. You could have thousands of people coming onto this site. And he, he just talked it up like that. And, and I'm thinking this is a word from God. You know. <laughs> how are you going to buy this, Gordon? And I said, I don't know. We've got no money. <laughs> God, where are we going to buy this? You know. So we put it out there, vendor finance, interest-free for a couple of years. And the vendor said yes. And here we are. Fantastic, isn't it? But I, as, as this guy talked to me and I could hear the, the voice of God and it was God painting a picture of what could be. And, and I, I saw you folk before you got here. Well, some of you are already here, but only a few. Steve is one of the 18. Most of you weren't here, were you? The 20th celebration. Steve is one of the 18. We said that every, every service in the 20th celebration. So. Steve, I said I'd never say it again, didn't I? But one more time, Steve is one of the 18. He started with us. There's only 18 left that started with us. That's the point here. I saw the rest of you before you got here. But here's the thing. I saw more thousands more. They haven't got here yet. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. So here's the point. Last week, you know, we're going to celebrate the, the, the growth and, and, and the fruitfulness that God has promised us before we see it by these eyes. We're going to celebrate because we see it through the eyes of faith. And last week we talked about the obstacles that will stand in our way. And we talked about turning the obstacles into opportunities. And if you weren't here, you need that message. And the good news for you is it's on YouTube. Get hold of it. And by the time you've watched that, you're, 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 going, to, you're going to charge hell with a water pistol. Put the fire out. There are obstacles to be overcome. There are obstacles in moving into all that God has for you. It's never plain sun. There are obstacles. But God knows you can overcome them. Isaiah 54 verse 4, Do not be afraid. You will not be put to shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. And so we looked at those obstacles last week and, and, and we, we learned how to turn those obstacles into opportunities. And this is called overcoming. Any overcomers in the house? This is called overcoming. Uh, when you refuse to let obstacles stop you from becoming all that you can become in Christ, and all that you were created to become, this is called overcoming. When you have decided in your heart of hearts to not hold back, this is called overcoming. Isaiah 54, verse 15 and verse 17. If anyone does attack you, it will not be my doing. Whoever attacks you will surrender to you. <laughs> you can take on all sorts of people. You really can. Because they will surrender to you. No weapon forged against you will prevail. That sounds like a good line for a song, doesn't it? <laughs> no weapon formed against you will prevail. Forged against you. You will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord and this is called overcoming. Attacks may come but they will not prevail. Weapons may be formed against you but they will not prevail. Voices may speak out against you but God will give you the right answer and sometimes, my friends, the right answer for you is silence. Because yes. God can say better stuff than you can. God's got an answer already figured out. God's got it covered. Jesus Christ gave his all for you on the cross. That's what Isaiah 53 is all about. That's the message. That you might become all that you can become in him. And the message of Isaiah 54 is that you might become all that you can become because of Isaiah 53 and the price that Christ paid. It's, it's, about, it's about the church prospering. And being fruitful, but it's about the individuals in the church prospering. Isaiah 54 verse 3. You will spread out, for you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will possess the nations and settle in their desolate cities. So whatever else this verse is speaking about, it's speaking about growth and prosperity. It's getting bigger, it's getting bigger. God wants you to prosper. Isaiah 54 verse 10. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love... His love never ends. 
My unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. God wants you to prosper. Isaiah 54, verse 11 and 12, uh, God speaks about the prosperity of the church for which he gave his son. Listen to this, and I hope you get this. A picture of the glorious church. I will rebuild you with stones of turquoise, your foundations with precious stones, I will build your towers with rubies, your gates with stones that glow like fire. I was thinking about that. I've talked to Rob about putting gates, that they entry there with a the little remote. <laughs> you know, keep villains out. And, and, and it's just got a description of the gates with stones that glow like fire. I'm thinking fiery gates. <laughs> Whoa. And I got the fiery remote. <laughs> Ooh, gates come open. Gates close, open, glow, stones that glow like fire, and the wall around you with jewels. I myself will teach your people and give them prosperity and peace. So, so, so that, that to me looks so prosperous. Turquoise, precious stones, rubies, stones that glow like fire, walls with jewels, and just in case you missed it, prosperity, prosperity, hallelujah. Uh, the church glorious. It's the church we're talking about. Isaiah 53, the price was paid. Isaiah 54, the prize is offered. You got it? Isaiah 53, price. Isaiah 54, prize. In Jesus' name. Isaiah 54, verse 2, do not hold back. It's all there for us, do not hold back. So what's it mean to hold back? What's it mean to hold back? See, if we're told not to do it, what's it mean to hold back? Now, football season's over. Unless you're into the round ball game. Whatever that is. Oh, someone said boring. We'll have a fight on after it's here. The soccer people will come in, take you down. When the real season was on, I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen teams where they get to like five goals in front and there's ten minutes to go and they hold back. So, well, let's just stay in the safe zone here. We're in front. We don't want to do anything crazy unless we lose our in frontness, you know. We've got, we've, got the, we've got the drop on this other team and we, we, we don't want to lose that. And so they, they just play safe. They hold back. They hold back. And whenever a football team does that, they put themselves totally in danger of losing. Offense is the best measure of defense. You've got to get out there. Do not hold back. Uh, whether it's whatever sport it might be, whether it's football or tennis, round ball game, other kind of game, whatever it might be, God, it, it, this is an illustration of holding back if you play in the safe zone. God wants us to go on the offense and not to put ourselves in danger of losing the game. When you hold back in relation to the pursuit of all that God has for you in the light of Christ's sacrifice on the Christ, you just won't receive all that he has for you. Don't hold back. Moses, think about Moses. God gets his attention through a burning bush. You know, and there's this bush, it's on fire, but it's not burning up. It's not incinerating. That, that ought to get your attention out in the bush. And there it is, so Moses goes over to have a bit of a look. It's like the talking Christmas tree. Starts talking to him. Hello, Moses. <laughs> Moses talks to this bush. And that's God in the bush. And, and God says, look, all my people, all my Israelites are in slavery in Egypt and I want you to lead them out and you can become the greatest leader in the whole world. Moses says, but I can't talk very well. I'm not much of a public speaker. You know what I want to say to Moses? And I want you to get this. Lie, lie, pants on. Because <laughs> God spoke about him later on in and God wrote this about him, Acts 7.22 Mo Moses was powerful in speech and action that's what God said of course he could speak he just didn't want the gig he wanted to stay in the safe zone he didn't want all the challenges of leading people and there are challenges people as soon as you get more than me <laughs> there's me and the missus in the house so someone's, I'll put that back where it came from in our house, one of us and it wasn't me she said, well, there's only two of us. And she said, yeah, you've worked that out. 
Imagine when you multiply that by hundreds. That's what I got. Imagine Moses multiplied that by thousands. He said, I can't talk very well. <laughs> well, he pushed through. He held back for a little while. He didn't push, then he pushed through. And he did become one of the world's greatest leaders and gets a gig in that book as well. Think about Gideon. Gideon's in the time of the judges and everything's going lopsided for Israel and God's after a new leader and, and there's Gideon hiding in a wine vat not doing wine but thrashing out grain he's in this vat so that the enemy can't see him because he's a man he's in hiding and the angel of the Lord comes and says I want you to lead my people and get them back to some stability give them some leadership spiritual leadership economic leadership military leadership and at Judges 6.15 Gideon replied how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my family. I'm just a little man. <laughs> and then he tried this trick and Christians are still using this. It was a trick of Gideon's. Don't mess with this one. It's called the putting the fleece out. And Christians use that and they think they're doing good. He was trying to get out of the gig by the fleece. He said, now we're going to put this fleece out here and the heavy dew comes down tonight I want to see if it's really you God and that's really I'm the man I want the fleece to be wet and all the land around it dry so that happened so he said I need another test I'm going to put the fleece out again and I want all the ground around it to be wet and the fleece to be dry and that happened too and people use that time, so I'm putting the fleece out don't put the fleece out if God says do it just do it, do it. don't hold back well Gideon pushed through and became a, a great leader and then was Saul so, so tall dark and handsome ladies said he was head and shoulders above all the rest this was Saul called to be king and the day they come to crown him as king they couldn't find him to get him on the platform and someone found him he was, said he was hiding out the back amongst the baggage at the end of the day, Saul never really did push through. He held back. David, King David, did not hold back. God put his hand on him. He did not hold back. It came to the greatest giant in the land by the name of Goliath. And, David, and, and everyone's scared of this Philistine. And they, they, they're shrinking back. And David, just a kid, comes along. And he says, I'll take him down. And Saul, who's the king, says, how could a boy like you take him down? He said, well, I can just do it. I protect my father's sheep from lions and bears and stuff, and I've done them in, and I can do this Philistine in. Just trust me on that. Saul said, well, you need to wear my armor, and he puts all this armor on. David's never worn that, and he sort of, he's there in all this iron armor, and he shuffles it, and he said, I've got to take this off. That's just not me. And folks, don't try and wear somebody else's ministry or armor. That won't work. And he said, what my ministry is, he said, is a little slingshot, and he went and got five little pebbles out of the creek, and he, he said, I'm going to take him down. And he comes towards him and, 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 and Goliath's mocking him because the, the, there'll be lots of mockery come your way when God wants you to step out. Don't hold back. And so he gets this one pebble in, in the slingshot and he, and, he, and he whirls it around and hits him, right, and brings him down, chops his head off. Great Sunday school story, isn't it? I love the bit they chop the head off. Okay, what are they going to do with Goliath? They're going to chop his head off. And someone, I've, I've heard this said, well, you know, if David really met, was a man of faith, how come he got five stones? Why didn't he just take one? I heard a preacher preach on this once, and he said, well, that's because he knew he had four brothers. He's going to take them down too. <laughs> David did not hold back. And while this applies to you as an individual, it applies to us as a church. And I want to wrap this up with some thoughts that I've been thinking about. I want to give you a Gordon quote. Hmm. Chaplains mind and take care of what they have. Status quo. Leaders stretch and grow and expand their organization and their church. They reach out to others and gather more sheep. Bible, can I just say this, by the way? Bible says, you know, all the believers are sheep. And the word pastor is Latin, actually, for shepherd. <coughs> so, 
we learn about how to care for the sheep and how to be bothered about the sheep and how to have pastoral ethics when sheep go wandering. <laughs> Did you know sheep sometimes wander? <laughs> I was brought up on a farm. We used to put electric fences up and that'd fix them. Chaplains mind and take care of what they have, status quo. Leaders stretch and grow and expand their organisation and church. They reach out to others. They gather more sheep. I am a leader, not a chaplain. As a church, we just celebrated 20 years of ministry. And after it was all over, a number of on Facebook and in other communication avenues said some good things and said, you know, we've just been here recently, came in the last year or two or in the last month or two or this year, whatever, and they said, I'm ready now for the next 20 years. Lots of people said that. I just love working with you, sheep. <laughs> Come on, we're going to start. It's now time to write the next chapter of the story of the Baldivis Church and to grow and expand in, 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 into 2013 and beyond, right? Are, are you with me on this? Uh, don't hold back. Don't hold back. I wrote this down, I sent an email to Catherine because some things we've got to talk about before I go away in a couple of weeks' time and I wrote down all these things and she hadn't talked to me since really because I frightened her. <laughs> I think it's tomorrow. 2013, intern program. We've got eight interns in, 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 that, I, that I'm aware of and that's going to require, from my point of view and those close around me, coaching, supervising, organising, motivating and like that. And as I look at uh, the growth that we have already and to not just to mind that as a chaplain but to expand it, more staff, more support leaders for playgroup because we run three a week. Yeah. Uh, that's a great inroads into the community. More staff for the bookshop. Huh. More staff for mopettes. Yeah. Some of you don't even know what mopettes are, they're little mops. <laughs> the big mops come in here, little mops go over there. Big mops are mums of preschoolers, that's what that acronym is. Little mopettes are the little people they bring that we look after while they're in here and just need more people. Can I frighten you with a bit more? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Two morning services for 2013. Ooh. Everyone except the musicians did that then. <laughs> a youth band for 2013. A new look evening service. Ooh. <laughs> What's it look like? You say, I don't know. <laughs> Baldivis Church presence in the new Baldivis High School. Yes. We already have. We've got so many year seven students that are just going to go in there and become year eight students in that brand new school. And we've already got the connection. We're going in there with them. That's past relief here, aren't we? Continue to check out our building program. A focus on Christian education that brings a deeper spirituality. So, wow, Gordon, that's 2013. That's a long way away. No, it's not. No. Nearly on us, folks. Let me give you something that's right on us. Baldav's Fair, first Saturday in November. And if you haven't yet hooked up with Mr. James Sharman or Mrs. Michelle By here, see them after the service. I want to be on your team for Baldav's Fair. Love to help you guys, but I'll send you a postcode from California. <laughs> Let me give you one more and then we're done here. Open air Christmas carols event on Sunday evening, the 16th of December, right on our campus. And I'll be looking for volunteers. <laughs> Lots of volunteers. God is growing this church. I believe God is growing you, the individual, in this church. For your own life, your own development, showing people all they can become in Christ. God wants you, he wants us as a church and you, as all of us as individuals, to be fruitful and prosperous. Don't hold back. Let Jesus loose in your life because without Jesus it's just a plan and an organisation and an activity. But with Jesus it's kingdom stuff. Yeah. Father in heaven, King of kings, Lord of lords. Thank you so much. You've called us to be part of your church, part of your kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, we read Isaiah 53 and see that by your stripes we're healed. You died for our sins, our transgressions, 
our iniquities, all the bad stuff we've ever done, you died for that because you want to show us what we could become. You want to sing in anticipation of fruitfulness and growth as individuals and as a church. You've opened up so many opportunities for us and we don't want to hold back. Holy Spirit, just put that word on each one of us right now. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Father, I want to pray for those folk who said yes to becoming interns next year to going to Bible college and having a place of ministry in somewhat of a formal way in the life of this church. Holy Spirit, make that word be for them this morning. Don't hold back. For every individual in this church, those who have traveled with us for a long time, whether they're one of the original 18 that remains from day one, whether they've come in in recent days, months, years, Father, put such a want to in our hearts that we just want to be part of whatever it is that you're doing as you write the next chapter of the story of the Valdivis Church, part of kingdom history. Our Father, put a joy in the heart of everyone here this morning, those who need healing, Father, that they'll latch on to what Jesus has done on the cross, make it part of their own experience, but put such a joy in the heart of everyone here for being part of what you're doing. Whatever part they play, whatever part they play, part of the story, part of the chapter. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, I want to pray for those who have never really said yes to you. They've stayed back a distance from you. Never surrendered to Jesus. May they know your love this morning in, in a brand new way and, and just reach out and run forward for you. And Father, that's the prayer for all of us, that we'd move forward for you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's stand, folks. We've got a song to sing, and as we sing our song, God speak to you, you know. God speak to me. Think, Gordon, you're up there talking. How's God talking to you? He just does. Right now. And maybe there's someone here this morning, and, and you know you need to make it right with God know that because you never really have you kind of know about church and know about Jesus and the cross and a whole lot of other stuff to know about it's one thing to commit to it's quite a different thing and I'm talking about the commitment this morning if that's you you know why don't you come down the front this morning some of you say hey there's two guys getting baptized next Sunday could we make it three or four or five we can make as many as you like we could make it three thousand that'd be something why don't you come down the front this morning if that's you? I'm thinking about believers' baptism. We'll stand down here and we'll make sure you get baptized next Sunday morning. Some of you say, you know, I, yeah, I just want to be part of the, the next chapter of the Baldavis Church story and I, just, I just, just need ministry for that. Come, come and stand down the front this morning. As we sing our song, the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit, touching your heart. Don't just sing, step out. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Let, let's sing and let's respond. Jesus. Father, your love never ends, never ends, never ends. Love us so much. Have compassion for us. Lord Jesus Christ, you lay your life down for us. Nailed to a cross for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. We might die to sin and live for righteousness by his wounds. We've been healed. Thank you, Lord God. I want to pray for everyone in the house, Father God, that no one here would hold back from receiving all that you have for them. Move out, move forward. that they can become in Christ. Father, I pray that you would put joy into the heart of every person in this house right now as they leave here this morning. I'll take a deposit of divine joy with them and serve them well as they realize your presence on a moment by moment basis. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Folks, just before you move, so I need to tell you this corner over here, call that prayer corner. 
folk over there to pray with you and for you. So if you're needing prayer for anything, don't hesitate to make your way to that corner for prayer. Check out the bookshop. Yep, new. A lot of books have come in there on Friday. So a whole lot of new stuff in there. Check it out. Um, coffee, donuts, a cup of tea in the coffee shop. This now becomes a place for ministry in here. So if you're going to continue to converse with one another, some conversation you've started, a conversation you want to start, that would be in the foyer, in the bookshop, in the coffee shop, or around the rear of the coffee shop in what we like to call the alfresco area. Uh, have a fantastic day. And uh, hey, don't forget we've got a service here tonight, 6 o'clock. A great message here tonight. Look forward to seeing you here, being part of the gathering here tonight in Jesus' name. Have a fantastic day.